Hello everyone, welcome back to Study Buddies. In today's video, we will be learning about linear kinematics. Kinematics deals with equations that describes the motion of objects like velocity, displacement and so on. We will be discussing about motions of object in one dimension and two dimension. The variables that involved in kinematic equations are displacement, velocity, acceleration and time. So let's start off by differentiating the components in linear kinematics. So first, let's differentiate between distance and displacement. Distance is a scalar quantity, while displacement is a vector quantity. The definition of distance is the total distance traveled along the path, while displacement is the shortest distance from the initial position to the final position. Displacement uses negative signs to indicate the direction of the object. The SI unit for both the, un the variables is meter. So let's try a simple question to understand distance and displacement better. The question is, Wendy walks 10 meter to the east and 4 meter to the west. What is the displacement and distance traveled by Wendy? So we know distance is the total length traveled. So all you have to do is plus 10 meter and 4 meter and the answer would be 14 meter. As for displacement, we have two ways of finding it. First, consider east as, the po as a positive direction since it's moving to the right and west as the negative direction. So what you have to do is take the positive 10 meter plus negative 4 meter. It is negative 4 because it's moving to the west. So your answer will be 6 meter. That is one way of doing it. The other way is that we know that displacement is the shortest distance from the initial point to the final point. So you can draw a line graph and identify the initial point and the final point of the journey. So here the final point is, this, is 6 meter and the initial point is 0. So the formula is to take the final position, subtract the initial position. So 6 minus 0 is equal to 6 meter. The second example is, now, Wendy walks 7 meter to the east and 15 meter to the west. The question is still the same. Find the total distance and displacement traveled by Wendy. So the total distance is 7 meter plus 15 meter equals 22 meter. As for the displacement, consider east as positive and west as negative. So positive 7 meter plus negative 15 meter is equals to negative 8 meter. So the negative here means the position or the direction of the object. Or you can do it by drawing a line graph. So your final point is negative 8 and your initial point is 0. So the formula is to take the final point minus the initial point. So negative 8 minus 0 is equals to negative 8 meter. Let me remind you once again, the negative here indicates the position of the object. Now, let's move on to speed and velocity. Speed is a scalar quantity, while velocity is a vector quantity. Speed is derived as the total distance traveled divided by time. So the formula is distance divided by time. While velocity on the other hand means the rate of change of position. The formula is displacement divided by time. But both have the same SI unit, which is meter per second. So now, let's try doing a question. A car moves 10 meter to the east and 4 meter to the west in 20 seconds. So what's the average speed and average velocity of the car? So we know that to find that, we need to calculate the total distance 
to find speed first. So the total distance is 10 meter plus 4 meter. And when it's divided by 20 seconds, so we will get the answer for the average speed, which is 0 0.7 meter per second. Next, to find the average velocity, you need to first find the displacement. So 10 meter plus negative 4 meter, it is negative 4 because it's moving to the west. And when the answer is divided by 20 seconds, you will get 0 0.3 meter per second. So that is the velocity of the car. So now that you have learned the variables, I'm going to introduce to you a bunch of equations which you will be using throughout this chapter. The first one is V equals to U plus AT, whereby the V is the final velocity, U is the initial velocity, A is the acceleration, and T is the time. The second equation is S equals to 1 over 2 bracket U plus V multiply with T. So the S here is displacement. The third equation is S equals to UT plus 1 over 2 AT square. And the final equation is V square equals to U square plus 2 AS. So you have to choose which equation to use based on the information that are given in the question. So let's try to do a question. A car was moving at a speed of 110 km per hour. The speed then increases to 180 km per hour in 20 seconds. So find the acceleration and the distance traveled by the car. So first, gather the information from the question. So we know what is the initial velocity, u, the final velocity v, and the time. First, since our velocity is in kilometer per hour unit and our time is in second, we must synchronize them. So I decided to convert my kilometer per hour to meter per second. So this is how we do the conversion. So now that we have done with the conversion, we need to decide which equation to use. So we can use V equals to U plus AT because we know everything in it except for the acceleration. So when you solve the equation, you will get 0 0.972 meter per second squared. Next, to find the distance, we can either use any of this formula because we have all the information except for the distance. And we will get the same answer when, even when we use two different equations. Next, the second question is a bit harder than the first one. A bus moves at a constant speed of 20 meters per second for 5 seconds. Then it accelerates at a rate of 4.3 meters per second squared for 6.3 seconds and maintains that speed for another 8 seconds and finally slows down to rest in 10 seconds. How far did the bus travel in total? So here, you need to separate them into four parts. I have highlighted them in different colors. So the first part is the constant speed for 5 seconds. So we all, know it, we all know the formula of distance is equals to velocity multiplied with the time. So 20 meter per second Multiply 5 seconds, you will get 100 meter. The second part is when it accelerates. So here you can use d equals to ut plus 1 over 2 at square because you know the initial velocity, the acceleration, and the time. So when you solve the equation, the distance for the second part is 211.33 meter. The third part is maintaining the speed for 8 seconds. So previously, when the car accelerates, the speed would have changed. So it's no longer 20 meter per second. So you need to use the formula V equals to U plus AT to find the new speed. So once you find the new speed, you can use distance equals to velocity multiplied time and you will get the answer 376.72 meter. And the final part is slowing down to rest. So here you know that the final velocity is zero, 
the time is 10 second and the initial velocity for this part it is 47.09 meter per second. So use the formula d equals to 1 over 2 u plus vt and you will get the answer 235.45 meter. So finally to find the total distance traveled by the bus you need to sum all the distance and your answer will be 923.5 meter. Next moving on to even more harder question. The third question is two trains are 600 km apart and they are traveling in opposite direction. One of the train is moving at 50 km per hour to west while the other one is moving to east at 70 km per hour. So the question is when will these two trains meet? So first I labeled the train heading to east as A and the train heading to west as B. We would definitely know that they will not meet in the middle because they are moving at different velocity. We could predict that they would meet somewhere closer to train B because train B is moving slower. So let's label the distance traveled by train A as D1 and the distance traveled by train B as D2. So now we know that D1 plus D2 is equal to 600 km. And the formula for distance is velocity multiply time. So D1 is equal to 70 t and D2 is equal to 50 multiply t. So in total, 120 t is equal to 600 km. And with that, we will know that the time taken for the train to meet is 5 hours. If you want to know the exact distance when the train meet, you can take the time and plug in into the equation. So D1 is equals to 70 multiply 5 hours and you will get 350 km and D2 is equals to 50 multiply 5 hours and you will get 250 km. So this is how we do when they are moving in opposite direction. But what if they are moving in the same direction? Then when will the train meet? So to do this, we need to use D equals to VT. So 600 km is equals to VT, whereby the V is the rela relative velocity. So VA minus VB is uh, 20 and then you multiply it by T. So 600 km is equals to 20 T. So when you solve it, the time taken for the train to meet will be 30 hours. So next, let's learn about free fall motion. Objects are said to be under free fall motion if they are under influence of gravity only. Remember, only if gravity is involved, the object is said to be under free fall motion. Hence, they will fall with constant acceleration due to the gravity, which is A equals to negative 9.8 meter per second squared. It has a negative sign because it's falling down. Here, we still use the same kinematic equation, but the S will be replaced by H. So these are the equations. So there are three situations for free fall motion. The first situation is when an object is being dropped from the rest at a height. So here, your initial velocity will be zero. Your final velocity is not equals to zero. Your acceleration is equals to negative 9.8 and your height will be negative h because it's falling down. The second situation is known as symmetrical fall. So this happens when an object is thrown and caught at the same height. So here, the initial velocity is not equals to zero. The initial velocity is equals to the final velocity, but the initial velocity will have positive sign, while the final velocity will have negative sign. And at the maximum height, the velocity becomes zero. The displacement is zero, and the time taken to reach the maximum height and the time taken to reach the ground is the same. 
The third situation is asymmetrical free fall, whereby an object is thrown and caught at different height. So here, the initial velocity is not equal to zero. The initial velocity is not equal to final velocity. The total displacement is not equal to zero. And the time taken to reach the top is not equal to the time taken to reach the bottom. So read the question below. A textbook falls at 20 meters per second. How long it takes to touch the ground and what is the height of the building? So first, gather the information that we have in the question. To find the time, we can use v equals to u plus a t, whereby the a is equals to negative g. So when you do the equation, your time will be 2.04 seconds. Next, to find the height of the building, we can use h equals to 1 over 2 u plus v t. The h will have a negative sign because it's falling down. So when you solve it, you'll find that the height of the building is 20.4 meter. So just remember to use the appropriate kinematic equations and you will get the right answers. And the final part of this video, we'll be learning about projectile motion. So before this, we learned how to use kinematic equations to describe the motion of an object that moves either vertically or horizontally. But what if the object moves in both directions? So that's what we call it as projectile motion. It is when an object moves in two dimensions. So the shape of the path is parabolic and it only happens when an object is launched or thrown into the air. And one more thing to remember is that the x-axis and the y-axis are independent of one another. So what I mean here is we can use separate equations to explain the motion in each x and y direction. So since projectile is also a motion, they have they also have displacement, velocity, and acceleration, but the magnitude differs in x-axis and y-axis. So first, let's take a look at take a look at acceleration. For x component, the acceleration is zero, while for y component, the acceleration is equals to negative g. Next, for displacement, in x direction, the formula used is x equals to u t. Since the acceleration is zero, we don't have to include 1 over 2 a t square. While in y direction, the formula used is y equals to u t plus 1 over 2 a t square, whereby the a is equals to negative g. Finally, for velocity, in x direction, the formula that we use is u x is equals to u cos theta, and for y direction, u sub y is equals to u sin theta. So once we resolve them into x and y component and to find the magnitude of the velocity, we can use the formula v is equals to square root u sub x square plus u sub y square. I bet some of you still might be confused, so I will show you a simple question. But before that, Let's familiarize with the graph of the projectile motion. So first, this is the projectile motion, a symmetrical projectile motion graph. The range is the distance between the launching point and the dropping point. The acceleration is negative g and the velocity at the highest point is equals to zero. And the time to reach the maximum height is equals to the, is equals to the time taken to reach the ground. So now, Let's take a look at an example. Let's say a rock was thrown at an angle of 30 degree with an initial velocity of 6.5 meter per second. The height is 10 meter. So our question is, how long is the rock is in the air before it touches the ground and what is the range? As I explained before, range is the distance between the launching point and the dropping point. So first, before solving them, let's distinguish the components. The time of the rock in the air only depends on the y-axis. Remember, it only involves y-axis. 
The distance travelled depends on both the horizontal and vertical axis. And for the velocity, we can split into x and y component. For x axis, the velocity is constant, while for y axis, the velocity is maximum when it's thrown and reaches zero when it uh, becomes zero when it reaches the maximum height and will negatively increase back until it touches the ground. The negative indicates that the rock is moving in the opposite direction. So first, draw a vertical line and label it as u sub y and a horizontal line and label it as u sub x. So to find the u sub x is equals to 6.5 meter per second, multiply with cos 30 and you will get 5.63 meter per second. Next, to find u sub y, take 6.5, multiply with sine 30 and you will get 3.25 meter per second. So now, let's create a table. For x axis, the acceleration is 0, while for y axis, the acceleration is negative 9.8. The initial velocity for x axis is 5.63 meter per second, while for y axis is 3.25 meter per second. Next, to find the time, as I said before, only y axis is involved. So, use the formula h is equals to ut plus 1 over 2 at square, whereby the u is equals to 3.25 meter per second. And when you substitute in the values, you will find the time. So the time is same for the x-axis. So once you find the time, you need to find the range. So range only involves x-axis. So to find the range, you will use the formula range is equals to ut. So whereby when you solve it, you will get the answer 10.13 meter. And with that, that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, press the like button and subscribe if you want more of these videos. Don't forget to press the bell icon and tata for now. See you all in the next video.